Hope you do. Amen. First, I want to welcome uh, those on the parking lot this morning. Welcome, want to welcome Tracy and Alexis. We're glad you're here on the parking lot this morning, and, and uh, we just ask God to bless you richly this morning. <clears throat> and also, Natalie and Zach and White, we're glad you're here this morning. And uh, there's probably some others out there that hadn't hadn't uh, uh, texted in yet, but we welcome you also. Also, want to welcome uh, uh, Baby Spencer into the world. Amen. Uh, he has showed up last night around eight o'clock or so, something like that. And y'all pray for Ashton and and uh, the baby this morning. Maybe Kyle too. Amen. And uh, then also uh, uh, my my stepmother uh, Barbara uh, Barbara Allred wanted me to tell y'all thank you for praying for her. She had a good night of rest last night, and she just wanted to thank she wanted me to thank you personally for praying for her. And uh, that's very important. And I also told uh, Joni, uh, Joni Vinson, that if we'd bring up her mother, Pearl uh, O'Brien. Uh, she's got cancer, and we, we, we're going to start praying for her. And uh, y'all remember them as you pray along the way. But if you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to John chapter 9. And look with me on the first 12 verses as I continue to preach through the book of John. And as Jesus passed by, he uh, did I say John 9-1? Amen. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, said, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work, and as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which has been interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. And the, neighbor, the, the neighbors, therefore, and they which, uh, which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat, sat and begged. Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how, how were thine eyes open? And he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to wash in the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. They said unto him, Where is he? And he said, I know not. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we come to you, thanking you for your kindness and goodness. And Lord, we just need you this morning. We need you more than we need anything else in this world. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to lay your hand upon this church body this morning, that you will encourage your people along the way. I pray that right now, if someone don't know you as Savior, that you'll tug upon their, their hearts and draw them to yourself. And Lord, I pray by the work of your Holy Spirit that you'll, that you'll do that this morning. And Lord, that you'll build your church, that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And Lord, we just want to lift that up into your hands today. We need you, be with our children in the back, be with all those that's working with them. Lord, we, we, we try not to cease from praying for them, for so many wonderful children that you've brought us to take care of. And Lord, help us to grow champions for Christ out of those children. I pray, Lord, that even right now that you'll move across our hearts on our point of need this morning. On whatever work of grace we need, I pray that you will take over. And, Lord, that you'll administer those grace, that grace this morning. So, Lord, we lift this day up into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I want to tell you something this morning, church. I, 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 I believe I'm preaching the wrong message, amen. And can y'all bear with me? Would y'all turn with me to Acts chapter 2 this morning and, and let's talk about the early church, amen? Y'all okay with that? I hope so. I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter 2 and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you about a few things this morning. I can tell you that uh, Satan has, uh, in the day and age of which we live, do y'all realize that we, our enemy is not other people, our enemy is Satan. Have y'all figured that out yet? 
You know, we, we wrestle against powers. We get, re, wrestle against rulers of darkness, principalities and powers of this age, and we wrestle with those on a daily basis. And I want you to understand that. Your co-worker isn't your enemy. It's Satan that's your enemy. And we need to understand that today. We need to understand who the enemy is because old Satan, he's a divider. He's a destroyer. And I can tell you he is a liar, and Jesus said he was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. So our identity should be in Jesus Christ and him alone. Amen? And I want you to look with me this morning. I want to look at a few things that Satan has hijacked over the last few years. I want you to see that uh, he has hijacked the church in the day and age in which we live. Look down with me in verse 37 this morning of Acts chapter 2 because there's been so many things that Satan has overcome people of. It says in verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked or they were cut in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now this is the day of Pentecost that, uh, that Jesus told his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. And when the promise comes, and now I'm going to make you witness to me and to Samaria and to, to Israel and to the uttermost parts of the world. And he told them that. And, and the book of Acts is still going today. But at this church, we're in the church age right now. And when Jesus comes back again and raptures out his church, that will be the end of the church age. Somebody say amen to that. But we're in the church age, and, and we're still living out the book of Acts in our lives. And, and, and as you follow the book of Acts, you can see that God has instituted certain things for the church. And the church is, is to, to be liable for those things along the way. And we as a body of believers are a church body. This is God's house. This is a building, but we are the church body. And that's who he's talking to this morning. And it says in verse 1, he said when he preached on the day of Pentecost and when the day of Pentecost from the, the Holy Spirit of God went from the abiding Holy Spirit that worked outside of man to the indwelling Holy Spirit into believers' lives. And if you're a believer today, if you've been born again by God's grace, then you have the Holy Spirit of God in you. And if you have the Holy Spirit of God, then the Holy Spirit of God is the same Holy Spirit of God that's in you that was here on the day of Pentecost. Somebody say amen to that. And he was also here in the beginning of time when, when God created the heavens and the earth and the, and the earth was without void and form and the Holy Spirit of God hovered over the face of the, of the water. So you can see that the Holy Spirit has always been. And the Holy Spirit that's in us today is the same Holy Spirit that's always been. Somebody say amen to that. And you think, well, I didn't know that. Well, I can tell you that's why the church has so much power. And I can tell you the church has lost its power because Satan has hijacked uh, the church members. Somebody say amen to that. But I can tell you today, he, these were pricked in their heart when they found out on the day of Pentecost that they had crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. They thought they were crucifying a man that was a, uh, that was a blasphemer, but they found out quickly that this was Jesus Christ that came as the Messiah that would save the, save the world of our sins. Somebody say amen to that. But I want you to understand that today. They were cut to the heart. Now, I want you to get a good mental picture of this. It was a time of Passover, and here come, here, excuse me, it was a time of Pentecost. I'm sorry. It was after pa uh, a Passover, and, and, and it was day of Pentecost. And, and during that time, the Holy Spirit of God, it came. It, Jesus was forming the church. The church was forming when Jesus was here. And his disciples, he was forming them to be apostles. And here it is on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit of God sat down with them. Amen? And there were some ten nations that were gathered together. And Peter got up and he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all ten nations, he, even though he's preached it in his language, they heard in their language. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And there was no interpreter. Amen? And I can tell you today that, that they heard that in their own language. And I want you to understand today that they were pricked in their heart and they were cut to the heart. And that's the first place that God cuts a man when he, uh, when he has drawn him to salvation. I want you to see the second thing this morning in verse 38. And Peter said unto them, Repent. Notice that word R is capitalized in your Bible. If you don't have your Bible today, I'll assure you that that word repent, thank you, Karen, is, is capitalized in our text. 
Well, what does repent mean? Does that mean kind of like confessing and all those type things? Well, not really. See, the word repent comes from a Greek word that means a change of mind, a change of direction. And that's what God wants us to do. He, it, salvation is a change of direction. Uh, it's when we surrender our will to His will because they were cut in their heart. Somebody say amen to that. Now, I don't have any notes, so y'all just have to bear with me. Amen. And hope that I finish when you do. Amen. And I pray that the Spirit of God don't finish before I do. Amen. Amen. But I want to be in tune with him this morning. So they were cut to the heart and they were pricked. And he, he said the big R word that our day and age does not like anymore. They don't want to hear anything about repentance. They don't mind confessing. They don't mind confessing Jesus Christ is their Savior. They don't mind confessing all those things. But that's just, a, that's just one part of it. It's the big R word that people have trouble with today because that means that they would have to acknowledge that they really are a sinner and they would have to change directions in their life to be a Christ follower. Somebody say amen today. Amen. So they were cutting their heart. I told Cindy this morning, uh, she, I usually, there's a certain time I go kiss her and tell her bye, and it was, I was a little bit late this morning. And I was walking out, and I found her over in another part of the house, and I kissed her, and I said, I'm running a little late because God's already dealing with me about changing my sermon this morning. Somebody say amen to that. And I was sweating in a little bit, and I'm thinking, oh, here we go again. And here I hope, hey, I hope it's God, and I hope it's not me. Amen? I tell you, i got the least opinion of myself than anybody in here. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. But I can tell you that God was dealing with me this morning as I got through praying and what I was praying. He was dealing with me about it. And I told my wife, I said, God is dealing with me. But I kissed her and I got in my vehicle and I came here and here I am this morning. So here we are in the midst of one another. And this is the day of Pentecost and the book of Acts is still playing out in our lives and it's still moving in our lives. The, the church is still in the church age. It all started on Acts chapter 2 right here and it's all moving towards the day when Jesus comes back again. Jesus has not come back again because I'm still here. Somebody say amen to that. And I pray that if you're not saved by God's grace, you'll get saved today where you will be able to go out when the rapture comes. Amen? If not, you're going to stay here. You're going to have to endure some things, but that's another sermon this morning. But I can tell you, he gives them the word, he gives them the word R, repent. And what does he do from that point? Well, why does he put that first? Because that's where it all starts. That's where it all finishes up, and it, it's all in the same bucket. You, it, it, and it says, and Peter said it to them, repent. And be you baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now I want you to see that this morning because there's been church doctrine that's built upon this one verse. As a matter of fact, they only got about four verses that they can quote that kind of backs this up along the way. But if you look at those verses and in the context of how they're wrote, all of us talking about believing in the rest of those verses. Somebody say amen to that. But in verse 38, he says, Repent and be you baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You will notice that when I baptize people, I always baptize them under the authority of the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And that's what he commands us to do. But so many people think that reads that, hey, you need to, you need to be baptized before you can be saved. Well, that goes contrary to what God is writing here in our text this morning. He says, he says, be you baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Notice that word for. It comes from a Greek word that, that comes from a Greek word called ice, E-I-S. This is also a prepositional phrase. And in this prepositional phrase, phrase it, that word ice means because of or on the basis of. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's talking about something that's already took place. Well, what's took place? Well, he's fixing to nail that down for you right in the next part of this verse. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, because of the remission of sins. Well, what's the remission of sins? That's when you got saved, amen? That's when your sins have been, have been forgiven. They've been remitted. Amen? They've been, they've been accounted to Jesus, well, to, to His cross. Amen? Those sins have been, uh, we're baptized because we have been saved. Because 
of the remission of sin. At the same time, what happens? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hey, amen? When God remits your sins, He forgives you, He saves you by His grace, then the Holy Spirit of God comes into our life. Amen? And comes into our hearts. Amen? It's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 and 21 22, right in there. He's, he, he's, the Holy Spirit is sealed in our hearts according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Anybody home with me this morning? But see what Satan has done. He's hijacked that part. He's hijacked that. And he's twisted things around where he can make people think, well, I could just do this and this, and I'm going to be okay along the way. But they never have repented. Maybe, they, maybe they've been baptized along the way, and, and they, but they never really gave their heart to Christ. They've never had their sins forgiven, or they've never repented from their sin. That means a change of direction, and you've pulled out of that sin, and you've gone a different direction. Anybody home? And I can tell you today that that's the most important part because you want your sins remitted and you want the power of the Holy Spirit. But Satan has hijacked that and he's turned that around where he thinks people's okay here and people's okay there and along the way. But, but I can tell you, they never knew who Christ was. And he's hijacked most members. Look now with me in verse 38 or verse 39 said, for the promise is unto you, the promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise unto you, to your children, and to all that are far off. He's talking about the Gentiles here. It was all Jewish people right here on the day of Pentecost, but he's already grafting in the, the, the Gentiles of that day. Even as many as our Lord shall what? Call. Where does he call a man? He calls him in his heart. And it, with many other words did he testify, exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. So you see today that, that once you repent that you that, that, and the Holy Spirit of God comes in and forgives you of your sins, then you need to follow your Lord and believer's baptism because that's the first ordinance that Jesus established when he started his ministry in Matthew uh, chapter 3 in verse 16. Y'all understand that today? And I can tell you he established that. Jesus established baptism at the first of his ministry. At the end of his ministry, he established the Lord's Supper for us to, to remember in remembrance of him and what he did. Y'all with me this morning? So I can tell you, see, Satan's hijacked all that. He, hey, listen, when people get saved, they can care less they ever get baptized. See, Satan's hijacked that, and they're AWOL Christians. And, 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 and we have the Lord's Supper. Say, listen, we're going to have the Lord's Supper. So that you come this day. We're going to observe that. And people say, I'm not going there. They're just going to have the Lord's Supper today. See, Satan's hijacked that too. Amen. And that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to hijack everything that's holy to the Lord. And he wants to, he wants to uh, profane it. Y'all with me? So when you're saved by God's grace, you need to follow your Lord and believer's baptism. And, and, and that's a public display of what Jesus did in our life. You take that word baptism right here in this text. It comes from a Greek word, baptizo, which means to be dipped. That means fully wet. Amen? I mean, hey, I'll put, I put you all the way under, amen? Now, some of you guys got them big old barrel chests. It takes me a little effort to get you way down, amen? But, but I'll get you down there. We had to baptize old Sean Simpson over there, and we had to, get a, we had to call and get a triple X to put on him. There was another guy at the same time. We got a triple X back here. You're not too big for your britches to get, get ba ba baptized, Amen? I put him under, boy, I'm telling you, him shoulder, he, he about took up my baptistry. And I put him under, I thought his, elbow, I thought his shoulders were going to rub. But let me tell you something, he was fully dipped. He was fully wet. Baptizo comes from another Greek word, from the same Greek word. It also means to identify with. Well, what do you identify with? You identify with Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. You identify with him, and you're showing publicly that you are a true believer in Christ, and you are a true Christ follower. That's what, that's what Christian means, Christ follower. Satan's hijacked that. 
He's told people, it don't matter if you be baptized. Hey, listen, and you're the one that misses the blessing because God honors that in your life. He honors that when you take the Lord's Supper. He honors those things. But oh, Satan, he wants you AWOL. He wants to hijack it and, and, and put it down on a lower level that it doesn't matter anymore. Hello? And he profanes it and he's got you. Boy, he's a sneaky rascal, ain't he? That's why he hates me, because I preach the word. And I'll tell you the truth. And it ain't easy, because I've got a big old bullseye on my back when I tell the truth. If you're a Christian, if you're a real Christian and serving him and loving people and, 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 and doing what God has called you to do, I'm going to tell you something, you're going to have a bullseye on your back. Because Satan don't like that. Hello? He's also hijacked all of our services. Boy, he has. See, it, it tells us over here in, in Matthew. To turn with me to Matthew chapter 20. I'm coming back here, amen. Y'all with me? Y'all okay? Matthew chapter 28. Hey, I'm not shooting from the hip. I'm just going with Jesus. Amen. It says in verse 18, or verse 16, the 11, the 11 disciples went away to Galilee to a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And I told, you, I told you what was going on there. They waited for the Holy Spirit. Amen. They have, they have Pentecost. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Because they were Baptists. Amen. In verse 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all authority, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Now, look what he tells us to do. The last thing he says when he's ascending up, Go ye therefore, or as you are going, teach. That word teach means to make a disciple. Teach all nations, all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We do that here, amen. But you can see that our job, our job is to make disciples of men as we go. That's why we have so much discipleship here. That's why I preach the Word of God line per line, precept upon precept, where you can understand it. Amen? Why? It's called discipleship. Because you need to know what the Word of God says. And, and He tells us as we go uh, to make disciples of men and, and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Notice that word teaching. Make disciples, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world or end of the age. When we're in the, we're, th this is our day and age in which we live, and this is the church age. Amen? So he tells us to do that, and, and our discipleship here is Bible studies. Uh, you, you come in, you, you sit down on a Sunday morning, you hear me preach the Word, and, and you take notes, and you make notes in your Bible, and, and you underline things, and, and you understand, you write down the Greek words and what it might mean, and, and that's discipleship along the way. And it's important to be discipled, that way you won't be fooled. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And our discipleship goes into Sunday school. And as Sunday school teachers ought to be in the Word, not just all. Listen, from Monday all the way until Saturday, they ought to be in the Word of God, ought to be in prayer, and their relationship with the Lord needs to be brought to the podium in their class. And if they're not doing that, if they just get ready at 10 o'clock on Sunday night, they robbed you of a blessing. Because they're going to bring the world's relationship in with you instead of their relationship with the Lord. It's called a hurry up, get it done method. Anybody home? Am I preaching the wrong sermon? And he tells us to do that. And he says, and he says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. He has commanded us to obey his 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 his, his commandments. That's right, but it's all his statutes, all his ordinances, he has commanded us to follow them. Well, I can't do that. Well, you ought to get saved. That will be a good place to start because once you get saved and get the Holy Spirit, then you're going to be excited about what God's doing. Amen? If it's a big old drudgery and you just hate it, it just makes you mad every time I mention some going to Sunday school or I mention coming back Sunday night, some of you just get, get gut mad. 
just bite a nail in two. But the ones that are here on Sunday night know more than you do on Sunday morning. And then when we meet again on Wednesday night and I preach again, then those know more. The, hey, they, they know three, twice as much as you do. They know a lot more. Amen. And I mentioned a Bible study. Hey, the women's Bible study just went through a six-week one. Hey, that, that, was what, that, that was a great Bible study. The men are going through a Bible study over next door uh, now. Not, not at this point, but every Sunday. And, and we have other Bible studies a lot. We had a church-wide Bible study on marriage. That didn't hurt nobody. If there's anything we need to work on is our marriages, amen? And it's work. I've heard people say, you know, we've never had an argument. You will. You wait till she has that first baby. She'll start arguing with you when she starts delivering him. And you better do what she says, Amen. Amen. I'm proud that people don't argue, but I, you know what? Sometimes we just, you know, it's a clash of the wheels sometimes. And I know y'all don't, but I do. Brother Ronnie told me something that was very inspiring one day. He said, all read between your wife and the Holy Spirit, you've had a heart's change. <laughs> Thanks, Brother Ronnie. God's gave our wives wisdom. And we're flesh to flesh and bone to bone. And when we argue with them, then we're, we're fracturing the bone. I wish I could just get that down in my DNA a little better. <laughs> I know all you men's holy. But God's still working on me. Amen. Y'all quit looking at my wife. I see what you're doing. You ain't going to make me look at her. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> Let's go back to Acts chapter 2. Y'all get anything out of this? Don't let Satan hijack your discipleship. It's important. Don't let, don't let him hijack being in the Word, being in prayer. Don't let him hijack your commitment to, to the Lord. Look at verse 41. Then they that gladly received the word were what? They were baptized. And the same day were added to them about 3,000 souls. There was about 3,000 people added to the church that day. See, God builds the church. Amen? We're the shoe leather that, that, that gives the gospel. And it tells us they continue steadfastly. It means unmovable and shakable. What in? The apostles' doctrine. That's the word of God. Amen? I'm going to preach the word of God here. This is why I'm going to preach out of the Word. Amen? I'm not going to use God Post Magazine to give you a devotional. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to preach out of the Word. Why? Because that's healthy, solid doctrine. Amen? That doctrine is solid. And it bears witness with other disciples of Christ. And it says, and they, and it, and it said, and they continue steadfastly the apostles' doctrine and the fellowship. Boy, there, there's a fellowship. I tell you, i got to have my Christian brothers and sisters. Amen, I do. And, and, and you know, it's so important. And the breaking of bread, there's your Lord's Supper right there. See, as a body of believers, we do that. And it, and it says also in prayers, because see, our prayers, we, we pray together for one another. We, we, the, the fellowship, the koinonia, is, 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 to be, is, is to help one another pack the heavy burdens. It don't mean you go get in people's business. You just pray for them and, and encourage them along the way. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Y'all getting anything out of this? Three of you. Praise the Lord. We're rolling. We're like the snail on the back of the turtle. He said, "Wee." <laughs> I know some of you think, I wish he'd get a new fan. I'm lucky to remember that one. In verse 4, I think it is. Y'all with me? Let, me? let me look over here and make sure I got the right one. I don't even know what I did with my notes now. It says in verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy and great love, wherewith he's loved us, 
Even when we were dead in sins, he quickened us. He made us alive together in Christ. By grace are you saved. Amen? Grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And he said, and he says in verse 6, And he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places. I'm, I'm over in the wrong chapter, ain't I? I knew something was wrong. Hey, you pay me. That's what's funny. <laughs> and you pay me too much, and I always, hey, now who's laughing? <laughs> Can we start all over? Verse 9 of chapter 4 of Ephesians. Now he that ascended, what is it that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? And he that descended up is the same also that ascended up far above the heavens that he might fulfill all things. Now see, Jesus, when he died on the cross, he was here for some 40 days, amen, after he resurrected. And in the 40th day, he was seen by some 500 people at one time and all 11 of his disciples, and he ascended up. Amen? Amen. Now, now, when he ascended up, then he sent back the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Y'all with me? And when he sent back the Holy Spirit of God, then those that are saved, he gave them a spiritual gift. If you have the Holy Spirit, if you've been saved, you've got a spiritual gift. You've got one. Some of you may have more than one. If you think you got four, you're probably not saved. Need to humble yourself, amen? But everybody that's saved has got a spiritual gift. Now watch. Y'all with me? Now he sent that back. Why? To build his church. And he used the word church. Now watch. He also, uh, verse 11, he gave some apostles, that means sent ones, and some prophets, that means uh, speaking forth. And some evangelists, that's those that are, are, are soul winners, and some pastors and, and teachers. I'm a pastor and teacher. We have Sunday school teachers. We got people that teach. They're, they're te they're, this is a spiritual gift. Well, I wonder why I could. I, I, I was a scared to death somebody's going to teach, ask me to preach and I can't, or teach and I can't teach. Well, that's because you don't have a spiritual gift. You got a different spiritual gift. Amen? And it says, for, for the, here it is. Here's the reason, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ, that's the church, till we all come in a unity of faith, of knowledge of the Son of God, into a perfect or mature man, into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Why? Because from henceforth be no more children tossed to or fro or carried about with every wind of doctrine by, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Now, now, see, God gives us those spiritual gifts. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's finish up. Let's finish. Let's finish. Y'all ready? Y'all don't trust me, do you? So everybody in here, if you've been saved by God's grace, you've got a spiritual gift that God wants to use in you at the body of Christ. Amen? That's what makes the body better. That's what makes the body strong. That's what makes the body in unity. I believe my, my gift is, is, is uh, I, believe, I, I believe one of my gifts is, is pastoring. Amen? That's what I do. That's in my DNA. And if I don't do that, I get frustrated and I get depressed. Oh, it's awful to get depressed when you're a pastor. But if you're not doing what God's called you to do, you get depressed. And, he's, and, 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 and I also believe I have a gift of teaching. Brother Ronnie said I had the gift of encouragement. I don't know if I do or not. Seemed like I would encourage people they'd be here. I think he missed the boat on that one. But I can tell you today that you have a spiritual gift. And he tells us in verse 1 of chapter 12, and you need to write this down, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not be, have you be ignorant. Now, he's not calling us ignorant. He's calling us uninformed. Because, see, 
we all have a spiritual gift, and it's all necessary for the body of Christ. It all works together for the good. And you look at verse 20, but now are, there, are you many members, yet one body? We're all many members, but there's one body. That's the body of Christ. And then everything makes up the body. What happens if the hand's not here? What happens if the foot's not here? Then you'd hobble in. The church is hobbling. What happens if the nose is not here? Then you can't blow your nose. Amen? What happens, if, what, what, what happens if your eyes are not here? Hey, you can't see to get in. And it cripples the body of Christ. Amen? And if the whole body's not here, functioning together as one body, then it's crippled and the church is crippled. Y'all with me? And he says, you, you know that you were Gentiles carried away with some dumb idols even, even as you are led. Now he's talking about that because they didn't realize the importance of the church body. They didn't realize the, the importance of spiritual gifts. They just thought it was something stupid. Well, they called it dumb. He called it dumb idols. Anybody home? I recovered well. I shouldn't have said stupid. Amen. What we do, we got dumb idols in our life that keep us from being the body of Christ. And what keeps, what those dumb idols are that he's talking about is what keeps us separated from the Lord and separated from the body of Christ. Y'all see that? And the body of Christ is not an organization, it's an organism. Y'all understand that? It's a functioning body. And it says in verse 3, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking of the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. You know, let me just go ahead and tell you, you can't be saved unless the Holy Spirit's involved. Amen? And the Holy Spirit's the one knocking on your heart's door. Now watch, here we go. Now there are diversity of gifts and some of the same spirits. Now look in verse 5. And there are differences of administrations but the same Lord. There's, there's people who have the gift of administration and boy do I love them. An ADH guy can do five things at one time but he's got to have the administration to, 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 to get them complete. That'd be Lord Scott. That'd be others in the church. God, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm a pastor. God leads me. But the church body is the one that fulfills the thing. Amen? Look down with me in verse 13. It says, See, it, verse 12, for as, for as the body is one and have many, dip, have many members... And all members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. What happens if those members are, aren't here in that one body? Now, I'm not talking about taking a vacation. I'm not talking about, I'm, talk, I'm talking about, they're just AWOL. Hello. Nobody wants to admit that. Well, they don't. I wouldn't. But when the piece of the body is gone, then the body is not functioning at the high level. And it says, as the body is one, has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body also in Christ. For by, by one spirit are we all baptized into the body. That's the, not talking about the water. He's talking about the Holy Spirit of God, be, being baptized by the Holy Spirit of God. That's a one-time thing. When you save the Holy, the Holy Spirit of God takes up residence in your heart, that's the bep, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's one time. But there's many different fillings of the Spirit. That's another Sunday. But he says, he says, whether you be Jews or Gentiles, black or white, yellow, green, wherever we be bound or free, bond or free, and have all made the same drink into one Spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. Y'all see that? And it's important, you're important to the body of Christ. Amen? we got to have one another. 
You can't take you can't take, take a nose and put it down there where your big toe is supposed to be. You can't take a big toe and put it up here to, for you for you to be able to hear. You got to have the ear. Amen. Every part of the body has got to be in order. Hello. I don't think anybody cares anymore. I really believe that the day and age in which we live, I believe, I really believe that people just really don't believe the power of the church anymore. But yet Jesus said, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and he gave himself for it. And it says over in Colossians chapter 1, he's the head of the church. He's the head. Amen. And we're part of the body. And what a lot of people do, they try to be a part of the body that's not a part of the body. See, a lot of times the, the eyes or the, or the big toe wants to be the eyes. Hello? Or the hand or the hand wants to be the heart. Or the heart wants to be the ear. But we're all designed to be a part of the body. Amen. And it says right down here somewhere, he said in verse 22, he said, Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Let me tell you something. You do without that big toe and see how your balance is going to happen. It's not a very, per I mean, a big, I mean, have you ever just looked at a big toe? I mean, they're ugly, ain't they? But you try to function without it. Amen? You see those pro athletes, they get turf toe and they can't hardly run. They were running a 4-2-4 and now they're running a 5-7. Why? Because that big toe went down on them. But that toe is necessary. And all the, all the behind the scenes, all the behind the scene gifts, they're all necessary. It talks about that in verse 23. Those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon we bestow more abundant armor, honor are, are uncomely parts or are, are un, uh, are unpresentable parts have more abundant commonness. I'm going to tell you something. There's some, there's some things, that, body parts that we hide that we need. And the ones that's behind the scenes getting the job done are necessary. We're all one body. Anybody home? Church? Satan wants to hijack the home. If he can hijack the home, then he, if he can hijack the dad, which is pretty easy to do, then he can hijack mom, a little bit harder to do. Then he can hijack the kids. That's what he really wants. He wants your kids. And if he can indoctrinate them, the way he'd like to indoctrinate them, there'll never be another person. I can tell you, one generation away from not even having doors open on a church. Hello? Then if he could hijack all the uh, all the, the doctrine of the Bible, if he, can, if he can hijack his people, where they'll never be at church, just very seldom, then he's got, hey, then he's got you AWOL. And when he's got you AWOL, he's got your life. And when he's got your life, he can control it. Then he'll control your whole family. He'll control the world. He'll control society. Hello? Satan wants to hijack us. Have you not figured that out yet? Listen, if you've been saved by God's grace and never been baptized, Satan has hijacked a blessing in your life. Because God ordained it, and there's a blessing behind that. Same with many things, the things of God. Where are you stand with him today? Do you know him? Do you really know him? Or do you just know about him? What about that big R word? Capitalize, repent, turn. You ever turn from your sin? That's the most important part of salvation. Amen? I tell you, God's been good to us, hasn't he? 
you don't, if you don't watch it, he'll hijack this new church that we're fixing to build. And if he hijacks that, then you're on your own. This old building's cracked. You see that wooden thing right there? The one down the middle? Y'all think that's there for decoration? It's cracked all the way down through there. Well, it is. You know why? Because the building's tired. Now, it's not going to fall down. I mean, amen? <laughs> but it's tired. And maybe your spiritual walk, maybe, maybe you're being a church body, maybe, maybe that's where God's got you. He's got you run down and tired. Not interested in being a part of it. If that's where we're going to stay, we just need to stay in this building. Amen? We don't need a new building for tired old crack, give out, spiritual walk. Amen? I mean, why, why take that next door? We just stay right here. What God wants is your life. He wants your life. He wants to make it new. He wants to get you where you can actually sleep and function. But you got to let him. Amen? I know that's probably a terrible sermon, but I told my wife this morning, she said, you better be listening. That's what she told me. <laughs> Don't put any pressure on me. I don't know who that's for. It's probably for me. But we need to straighten up our spiritual walk where we can go out in the highways and byways of life and reach people. Amen? Amen. Let's pray.